everyone, um, I'm Morgan Harding, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the United States Department of Agriculture. Um, I know you guys have all heard of it, but can you guys just give me an idea of what you think it is? What do you think the USDA does for us? Do what? Do a lot. Yeah. Provide subsidies. Right, yeah, exactly. So that's definitely a big part of what they do. The main thing people know the USDA for is like uh, meat inspection and things like that. Exactly, yeah. So, so what this is going to do, I'm going to hopefully teach you guys um, some main points that they do, maybe expand on what you already know, and then I'm going to hopefully give you guys some examples of um, how they, what they provide society and what they give us um, every single day. And then lastly, um, hopefully you guys will be able to talk to other people about it. A lot of people don't know anything about the USDA or about what they do, so hopefully you'll be able to kind of inform them and tell them how important they are to us. So the mission statement of the USDA basically says um, they're just going to give us a set of guidelines that we and that they need to follow <coughs> while we're making our, we're producing our, um, agricultural products. Um, they're going to tell us basically that we need to educate other people and we need to manage everything properly so that agriculture can continue to thrive um, throughout like future generations. So can anybody tell me what the cash crop was for the uh, English settlers? That's tobacco, if anybody doesn't know. And that's corn. Can, which one do you guys think it was? Um, yeah, so when the settlers got here from England, they found out really quickly that they were not going to find any silver or gold. They uh, got kind of drenched with that. So uh, when they started farming, they found out that the uh, merchants back in England uh, were able to trade the tobacco for goods. So when they started producing more and more tobacco, the merchants were able to trade, them, trade goods for them so that they could be more prosperous in the new land. So um, a big thing with tobacco, too, was you had to have land to, have to, to grow it. So if you're a settler and you produce a whole lot of tobacco, you obviously have whole, had a whole lot of land. So you were better off um, in your new life when you were here in the Americas. All right, so what do we get from the USDA? Basically, obviously we get food, we get clothes, shelter, everything that we need to build shelter, all of the materials, everything like that. A whole lot of jobs. I think it's like, uh, what, 75% of USA jobs come from ag. It's a huge, huge industry. Um, and medicine. There's so many things that we can do with agriculture now with all the technological advances. I mean, medicine is incredible now. Everything that we have is awesome. Um, I love this quote. I know you guys have probably seen it. But without ag, we would legitimately be naked, hungry, and homeless. We wouldn't have anything. We'd be completely lost. So there's actually 17 different agencies of the USDA, but today I'm just going to talk to you about the main five. Um, you guys have probably heard of most of them that I'm going to talk to you about. So the first one is going to be the Food and Nutrition Service, and they are all about food safety, like Antonio mentioned, um, guidelines and like regulations on how to process food, how to um, store food, and how to package it. So. They're going to be um, increasing education, but a lot of USA does, but they're really going to focus on increasing, increasing food security and safety education. Um, so they're going to be um, con contributing to every like county kind of in the US. So a lot of schools are going to have these kind of programs, like with their lunch menus and everything. They're going to have um, how to store it properly before you serve it and that, that kind of stuff. And it's also going to increase um, public morale. You're not gonna, people aren't gonna be scared. Like, I wonder if the, these eggs were refrigerated at the right temperature. I wonder, like, anything like that. You're gonna be confident in things that you buy and things that you uh, cook with every day. The next one is the Agricultural, National Agricultural Statistics Service, which is NAS. Um, it's the uh, huge statistics service that puts out the US Census. Has anybody heard of that? I'm gonna talk about it in a little bit. But um, basically, they just provide ranches, farmers, and agribusinesses with um, comparable data. They're going to tell you what's happened in the last few years and what you can expect to happen. So um, every single day, the ag sector gets bigger and bigger. Like, it's, it's always changing. It's always getting growing and expanding. So um, the NAS system, they give farmers and uh, producers a whole lot of insight on what they can expect um, in the future with changes like that. And um, also, any other information like um, increasing or decreasing prices for like crops and things like that, 
they're going to have them um, kind of prepare them for what they need to like, look forward to or whether they need to decrease what they're doing or and expand in that kind of regard. Now the Food Safety and Inspection Service is, um, I know you guys have probably seen this USDA approved on like meats and dairy and stuff like that. They're going to be really, really, really focused on um, making sure that we don't get like E. coli or salmonella or stuff like that. Um, so they're, they're going to be the ones that, that do like recalls and everything. And there's two main recalls that I want to kind of tell you about. Have any of you heard of the, um, the meat recall in California recently? So there was this ranch in California that had a recall on, I think it was like 17,000 tons of meat that they had to recall because it wasn't, you heard about that? I did, yeah. It wasn't properly um, inspected. So like this meat is just sitting there, you can't sell it, you can't do anything with it because it didn't pass inspection. So it's like things like that, um, that kind of take back the economy with that kind of stuff because you, you don't pass inspection, you've got all this worthless meat sitting there with nothing to do. Uh, and then there was another place in, I mean, another uh, company in Washington that had a recall on their, I don't really, I don't know about all this, but it was like a boil in a bag, and so it's like a, a hard-boiled egg that you stick in the microwave and you boil it, like, that. I don't know. But they recalled it because it had salmonella contamination in it, and it was like little things like that. Without the Food Safety Inspection Service, we would be eating this gross stuff, and we'd be consuming it, and we'd probably be not in great shape, but health-wise. Um, so yeah, the Food and Safety Inspection Service are going to make sure that all of our food is wholesome and uh, healthy for us, so that we don't uh, consume all this nasty uh, foodborne illnesses. And next is going to be the National Institute of Food and Ag, which uh, we should be especially proud of, because they um, fund research in land-grant universities. So I don't know if any of you guys heard, but last May, um, the director of NIFA came to Virginia Tech and he spoke about um, how we can help the federal government in their goals, how we can help them with the research. So the um, Institute of Food and Ag, they don't actually do any research, but they fund it. So without them, we would we wouldn't have a lot of the funding that we do. Um, so they're going to kind of help with the education and the advancement in agriculture. So they're kind of pushing, <coughs> pushing the future forward for us so that we can keep them, keep everybody um, kind of on the same level, on the same level and keeping us together, together with that kind of stuff. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's actually the agency I work for. In really? D yeah, in D.C. And, like, one thing that we really focus on is making sure that, like, land-grant institutions, like, here and other 1862 institutions have money to build like new facilities and things like that. Oh, okay. So yeah, along with research, we also, anything that's gonna help push the agenda for agricultural research, whether it's a program or a building mm -hmm. and things like that, that's what the agency does as well. So another big thing that they do for us. And last thing I'm gonna talk about, a lot of you have probably heard of this, the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Um, so they're the ones that uh, give a lot of information on certain types of farming, like organic farming and things like that. Um, they, they teach um, the proper like, soil conservation techniques and like, how to prepare against like, erosion and all that kind of stuff. Have you guys heard of what's happening right now in the Chesapeake Bay area, like the big controversy that's going on? Which yeah, one? the one with like, all the phosphorus and nitrogen. Oh, nutrient pollution. Yeah. So a lot of farmers are getting blamed for it, like getting blamed for all the pollution and all the runoff that's going into the Chesapeake Bay. But really, um, farmers, a lot of the, well, the bigger farms are actually really, really informed and they know how to maintain all of their runoff. But the urban societies, like if you fertilize your grass and your plants and stuff like that, that's where a lot of the pollution is coming from. And a lot of people are just like, all the economists are like, oh, the farmers, like you're messing up everything. But it's like, urban societies and like subdivisions and schools and things like that, like you have to really pay attention. So that's where um, the Natural Resources Service comes in. They kind of like, okay, like you guys need to pay attention. Like you know where this, this chemical is going, you know what's going to happen. So you have to, they're trying to, it's their effort to kind of like preserve the bay. And not just the bay, but all of our other watersheds too. Okay, so I talked a little bit about the Census of Ag, and that's um, with the National Agricultural Statistics Service. Um, so the census uh, comes out every five years, and the last one actually came out uh, in 2012. All of the information was just officially released a couple weeks ago, but 2012 was the year that it came out. 
Um, so it's just a survey that the statistics service sends out to every to every farmer that um, produces anything or grows anything. So they um, they ask questions like, um, how much land do you own? How much do you use? Um, what do you think that you're? How much do you think you're going to produce in the next year? How much have you produced in the last five years? Things like that. So they can kind of take all this data and make it into like a roundabout picture of the ag sector. So it kind of gives um, anybody who needs the information, like ranches or agribusiness <coughs> or um, any like big production company, it gives them like a good estimate about where we are now and how much we've grown or how much we've declined. Hopefully, we've grown, but. It kind of gives them a good um, estimate on what to expect and what to look forward to. Really. I know you guys have heard of WIC, right? Yeah. Women, Infants, and Children. So it's um, it's a lot of people think that it's an entitlement program, but it's actually not. It's um, grant based. So Congress gives the federal government a lot of amount of money to use towards programs like this. So um, this is for low income women who are pregnant or um, have small children, and they identify small children as under five because they're um, most at risk for malnutrition. So what WIC does is it gives them um, access to nutritional food and also education. So you can get um, health care referrals to good physicians and doctors. You can get um, nutritious food for you and your children. Um, and also it gives them a little bit of um, better hope. Like, you're not going to want to be pregnant and worry about like how am I going to get food or how am I going to you know keep, take care of this baby. So um, WIC definitely is a, a huge step forward in um, keeping um, the growing nation healthy and prosperous. So Ag in the Classroom is one of my favorite things to talk about because it's a fairly new program and um, it's actually a lot of uh, Farm Bureau um, committees work with them so it's like they go into schools and they have um, like an agricultural lesson basically they go they teach the teachers first what they need to be including in their curriculum and then the teachers of course teach the kids so um, if you came from like a smaller community you probably know a little bit more about agriculture than if you came from like a big city and it's really sad I saw a, uh, a documentary one time they asked kids like, where does chocolate milk come from? And one of them was like, a chocolate cow, of course. And I'm like, what? Like, a lot, all of us know, like, you don't get chocolate milk from chocolate cow. But they don't teach that in school. You don't, you don't learn about agriculture. So what Ag in the Classroom does is they have um, just increasing amounts of ag in school. So, like, you learn more about um, the processes of how things work, how things grow. There's one that I actually read about um, in Ag Literacy Week. They teach about how a chicken grows, how it grows from the hen to an egg to be a little